I'm Jim Deedla, host of Jet in the Region, here on AM 1230 WJOB. We'll go to the community programming initiative portion of our uh, final stretch here, and that will be the City of East Chicago. City of East Chicago is paying for uh, the rest of uh, my show here today. And I am going to ask you two guys to kind of, when you talk, kind of shout it nice and loud so that the camera will pick it up. Huh? I'll sure. put yours over here so we'll kind of talk to that camera because this will also appear on ECTV and they're using a, uh, a roving microphone that isn't attached to the board. So, all right, let's move on. Your name is, let me get your mics on here. Your name is? Yeah, my name is John Rubel. I'm with SCH and we're a consultant helping the city of East Chicago right now. Short Elliot Hendrickson. That's correct, yeah. A Minnesota and Indiana based company. That's correct, a friend of WJOB. You got it. John, what's the last name again? Rubel is the last name. John Rubel, and you are? Milton Reed, city of East Chicago, a consultant for okay. economic development and project management. All right, uh, City of East Chicago Economic Development and Project Management. So I'm guessing that SEH is doing a big project in East Chicago. Is that, is that right? Yes, yeah, correct. We're assisting them with the uh, RDA project currently undertaking. Uh, it's the phase one of that grant, about $17 million, and we've got about 10 or 12 new interesting, exciting projects that are going to be coming out this year. All right, then we're going to go through each one of those. I didn't realize I was actually going to have to work during this <laughs> half of an hour, but I'm going to do that. It's John and Milton. Milton, I got you there. So, uh, John and Milton from the e city of East Chicago, if you'd like to talk to them about anything to do with the e economic development, you know we love to talk about that here on WJOB. All you got to do is call us at 219-845-1100. All right, Milton, what's the biggest project going on in EC right now? Well, that's a good question because there are several projects that are equally as large, but one of the most exciting ones is the retail development that you will see at Broadway and Main Street. And um, this is, is an exciting project because um, many, many years ago, uh, several studies were done in East Chicago and saying, you know, how do you revitalize, revitalize your city, revitalize your downtown area? And each study pointed to uh, Main and Broadway in the uh, harbor section of town. And uh, there was a study recently done by Mayor Anthony Copeland and again from Hyatt Palmer who are consultants for um, Indiana downtown. They revitalize downtowns all over the country. And they said, hey, again, concentrate on Maine and Broadway. And so what the mayor has done by uh, having a balanced budget, he has been able to finance a retail development, two full blocks of retail space uh, in this in this area to be the anchor of, uh, of of economic development in the area and so the goal is, is that once you do this area you can duplicate this across the entire city so not only will you have new retail buildings you'll have new streets new sewers new water lines total reconstruction fiber conduit running throughout security cameras uh, because again uh, we realize in the city that for people to come to an area it has to be safe and it needs to be clean so this project is, is really at ground zero uh, as far as development. It will feature um, uh, availability to build to suit for retail. Uh, we don't think that, uh, we think some of the mom and pops will do very well there. And the city being in the position to offer uh, quite a few incentives uh, for, for tenants. Uh, we talked to some good, strong anchor tenants who, you know, we, uh, it's in negotiations, so, uh, we, but there will be some people where, 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 every, where your everyday person just needs to go and has to go uh, into our downtown. That is the uh, strategy. And uh, we're talking to Milton, last name again? Reed, R-E-E-D. And John Rubel, R-U-B-L-E. That's correct. There you go, John Rubel. John Rubel's with S-E-H, and Milton Reed is with the City of East Chicago Economic Development. You guys are hearing just a slight echo on the radio. I gotta turn it up so that we can get the audio for this on ECTV. All right, so Mel, let me follow this up. Where you grow up? Pardon? Where did you grow up? East Chicago, Indiana. Where? In the Harborside. Where? What? What cross streets around? 
Cross Street, um, Columbus Drive and Butternut. Col Columbus and Butternut. Yes. Okay, not too far from the area that you're talking about. Not too far at all, walking distance. Walking distance. I I I've walked that track many a day in my youth, I'll say. So you're mm -hmm. talking mainly on the north side of Maine right now, there's been the de redevelopment of some residential, correct? Yes, there has been, and there are, I mean, the plans, I mean, we can just go on, on, on and on with the plans. Also, right in that immediate area, uh, we're going to be breaking ground in the spring for housing stock. Uh, there will be a couple single family homes as well. I think it's either 8 to 12 unit um, and it's done by, by the housing and redevelopment, but that's going to be new construction right off of Deardor in Maine, 136th in Deardor. Right by the K House. No, the other direction. North. The other direction. The other North. direction is up oh, wait, wait. Lock North. Oh, wait, wait. Deodor is and 100 and I forget what it was. So you have Main Street, then you have Deodor. Yeah. That's the next street, and then one block north. So it'll be new construction on Broadway, and you go another block north, new construction of housing stock. All right. So if you look in that area, all the reconstruction of the street Broadway is going to go all the way from Guthrie down to Euclid. That's going to be a major, uh, an, another major street project, finishing up that leg. Then you'll have new construction of Main Street, and that will go from Columbus Drive, and, and that will be relatively new all the way to uh, Guthrie Street. So, uh, Milton Reed, you go, where'd you go to high school? Central. Uh, East Chicago, there's another high school in East Chicago Central. No, I, I, know. I, I bleed Cardinal Red, as they'll say, go Cardinals. Yeah, well, you know, you'd be surprised how many people I, I uh, think that went to Central. You're way younger, but sometimes people are like, you can't really tell, and you go, oh, you went to Central. No, actually, I went to East Chicago Roosevelt. You're not near that level. Well, I, I'm near. I was the first class to go four full years. So. Oh, really? So yes, you're, uh, you're much older than you look, to be straight. What is that, 86 they switched over, or something like that? Yes, yes. The graduating class of 87 was the first graduating class. I was class of 90. All right, so you're the class of 90 out of EC. Um, did you go to school or anything? Yes, I did. I'm a graduate of Purdue University. We're up here or down there? 95, Lafayette. P-U-W-L, Purdue University, Purdue, West, Lafayette. West Lafayette. What's your degree in? Uh, organizational Leadership and Supervision. Organization, organ OLS, as we call it. OLS, and yes. they changed it to like entrepreneurship now, right? Yes, I've been an entrepreneur for about 13 years. It feels like an interview, which it is, I guess. <laughs> it is. It's, it, well, I, yes. I want to get some depth to people that are watching well, it well, on sure. the TV My and also listening uh, because I, I don't know. You know, I probably have interviewed you before, and you're gonna like, hey, dude, we did it two or three times before, but maybe not. If no, I, no, this is the first. And, is and it, no offense, my my brief brief background is I, um, my economic development, financial management came from corporate America. I did about ten years in corporate America, and very high level of procurement and contract negotiation and cost reduction. And Mayor Copeland asked me originally to come in and help him reduce costs. He was faced with a $15 million budget, and he was very adamant about getting this, getting the city back into the black. And when he tapped me originally, it was for just strictly cost reduction, renegotiating contracts, looking at your entire supply chain, your telecommunications spend, forensic audit of all of your cost structure, your utilities, and that's that's the core of what my value proposition to municipalities is. It's, Straight line cost reduction. Pay a dollar a day, seventy five cents tomorrow. And uh, the um, that deficit, where is it now? It is. We're in the black. Uh, that deficit has been totally eliminated, and it took a couple years. And it took again Mayor Copeland several tough decisions. Uh, but now the city is in the black. The city does not rely on casino dollars for payroll. And the other good thing about it, which for all the residents, all the children, is that the money that was originally slighted day one for infrastructure that had to shore up general funds is now going to infrastructure and improvement and that's that's the difference of night and day of what you see in the city so now we can have 3.5 million dollar project in the parks and that's just phase one of park improvement there's a million or so more coming in phase two you can have all of your streets redone the right way but not just putting a surface on the top but you go down you pull out those sewer lines you pull out those old water lines and the connections and it'll last for 20 30 years so this is the type of work that you know and I'm not blaming anybody maybe it was neglected but you're doing it right now and the the residents can actually see the benefits I mean um, again just more bringing art back into the city uh, a block down we have a unity plaza uh, going in place and this is as is actually probably close to a million dollar project where we're going to have um, it, it's a plaza but it creates art and it has like a 60 foot art wall 
that just speaks to the images speak to the heart of East Chicago. You have the old Roosevelt logo, the old Washington uh, high school logo, things that just East Chicago, even your purple. trains. Purple, family. right? <laughs> well, it's, it's purple a is it's a, Roosevelt. No, it's a steel art wall that's going to be backlit. And so the images are transparent. Tom Tom Termaluki, he was a Terlimki. Terlimki, yes, yeah, very well-known artist. Out of Hammond here, yeah. He's he, very, you know, I need to get him on, by the way. Oh, he's a great guy. He's okay. a great guy, passionate about his work. All right, so I don't mean to cut you off, but I want to I want to get. We got a lot of different projects to talk about in sure. Chicago. By the way, if you got any questions about any of this or comments, two one nine. 845-1100 here late on an extremely frigid uh, February day here in uh, at the WJOB studios here at 7150 Indianapolis Boulevard. We're talking to Milton Reed with the City of East Chicago Economic Development Department and John Rubel of SEH. I'm going to follow up with one more question and then we'll bring John in here. Um, you graduate from East Chicago in 1990 Yes. So you know the scene, you know, you, you went away, you come back. There has to be a level of hope and belief that investment in East Chicago is going to pay off. And you, to some extent, you're fighting public perception at times. How do you do that? Well, I think the first thing you have to do is some type of restoration of integrity. And that's only by action. It takes time, but you can tell people what you're going to do, but you can also show that. And um, being fair, being even across the board, and you're right, you know, me personally, I do have a choice of being in East Chicago or not. Uh, my career and background allows me that I could probably move anywhere in the, in the country and I'll be fine. But I felt that if all of the, the professional people and everyone left East Chicago, all of the, the people that are grounded and rooted in the church and in the community, if we all leave, you know, then what's left? And I didn't want to be a part of, you know, some people say they left East Chicago because there's nothing there. And I say, let's just make sure they say that nothing left. And so, so yes, I think that the, the direction that the city is going in, we see positive things. And we just have to restore integrity. We know downstate and other places we always haven't had the best reputation. And maybe it was for cause. I'm not here to judge anybody or anybody in the past. You know, but I definitely say if you see a straight line of just trying to do things right, trying to uh, uh, put your best foot forward, the, the work more or less speaks for itself. And if you see the improvement, either you see the improvements or you don't. Either you're gonna see a revitalized marina or you're not. Absolutely. He is Milton Reed, and as you were speaking, I just figured out the technological problem in my head, and I think we just did that. You tell me when you want more or less on it. You're good on it. Okay. So we'll get a little bit better sound here on the second half of the program. Hi, East Chicago. Don't forget, I'll be out at East Chicago Central for six games announcing them. Stop by the booth and say, hey, you know, I saw you on TV, and you're much better looking in person. Um, Milton, uh, let's talk about it. What's SEH's involvement in all this? Well, SEH has, was, was tapped by Mayor Copeland to be the design engineers for the RDA uh, project. Um, every, every community, as you know, communities in the area, they get a big ask, as we coined the phrase uh, around uh, the mayor's office. They get a big ask. And, and our ask was, the mayor's strategy was to really articulate that ask and have a solid plan going forward. And I believe the total project is $32 million. And, and it's, it's, it's about 38, actually. $38 yeah. million. Mm -hmm. And so SEH is the design engineers that have kept, helped put the, not only the package together for the ass of the RDA, but all of the design, the projects, uh, which they give very detailed on the engineering uh, side of the project. And as you know, too, you know, you do, you, you get your funding in place, you do your engineering, and then that, the next step is construction. So they've been involved just about every step of the way, uh, been very good partners for the city. Um, very, very reliable and uh, very responsive. Yeah. You know, John, obviously I know a lot about your organization and so forth, but tell people, I mean, what actually SEH is about. Sure. So um, for this project with the city of East Chicago, what we did is back in 2012, uh, basically worked with Mayor Copeland to develop a master plan for the uh, revitalization of the waterfront, which would then be used um, to go to the RDA and ask for funding for these projects. So um, through that through that process, that revitalization process, we identified about $38 million worth of work, uh, helped the city send in an application to the RDA and got approved for the first phase of it. 
uh, which is about uh, seventeen million dollars. Yeah, about seventeen million dollars. Uh, it's all RDA, or is that it's, part part EC or part gaming or what? Well, that's all. It's all RDA. Uh, so it's all RDA now. Is that affected by what's going on downstate right now or on the funding, or is this already already in the? Books. The, the, this seventeen million is currently already earmarked. It's in the books already. Um, not impacted by anything that's going down. Okay, currently. describe what seventeen million dollars gets you. So stay on that mic a little bit, will you? Sure. So seventeen million dollars. Um, like Milton said, um, part of that money is going to the Main and Broadway developments there, the retail developments. Uh, some of that money is also going to the reconstruction of Broadway Avenue in the right, Let's take those in uh, retail development. You're gonna, you're at Main and Broadway. Correct. All right. Where exactly on Main and Broadway would that be? It would be the northeast and northwest corner. So there's two separate buildings that'll be going in out there. Isn't um, there stuff there now though? Uh, the no, the, there there were several buildings there. All have been uh, demolished and uh, torn down. So there are empty lots. Other than uh, there is a community uh, community builders has a building right on the corner of Main and Broadway, which is relatively new. But the rest of the block will will have the retail space. And uh, around, I mean, is that an acre, two acres? Uh, or does anybody know around? I, I would say a little over an acre. A little over an acre. acre. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty prime. Uh, retail space there oh yeah and so mm -hmm. so the city basically builds the building and then what happens after that I mean, well the, the city will build the that. building the city will also uh put tenants in in the building the city will will lease the building and and which city agency i'm not sure it may turn over to redevelopment or someone like that but uh the city will maintain maintain the building and if it is successful, maybe a private person wants to get involved at that point. But right now, the city has the wherewithal to to invest the funds to revitalize the area, and this is this is ground zero. Okay, so let's look at that. I mean, are you talking st strip mall size, like across the street here, or are you talking larger pieces, or is that yet to be determined well, how it's going to be cut up? No, it's th this project is going to break ground in the spring. The contracts uh, are are being received. I believe the contract deadline, the bid deadline line is uh, coming up in a, in a week or two, and one building is approximately 6,000 square feet, and the other one is about 8,000, 8,800, something like that, so you, you put those two together, um, you know, that's, that's the size of the lot, so uh, we can build a suit, so, you know, you can get anywhere from as small as 1,100, maybe to up to 3,000, 5,000 square feet, you know, we can divide it up, uh, basically what was needed. All right, so uh, Milton Reed with City of Econo East Chicago Economic Development, you grow up there. What would you like to see in these space? Well, I'd like to see stable, successful businesses or organizations. Um, we have organizations within the city uh, that need office space. Uh, that, that would be good. Um, you know, where, where someone where my, like my mother, was very active. I mean, she goes to the post office. Uh, she goes to, she likes to get a cup of coffee sometimes or, you know, something like that, a rest, local restaurant, a uh, restaurateur in the area. So I like to see, I, I like to see uh, cleaners in the area. There is not a cleaners in the uh, city of East Chicago. So maybe you don't set up a full cleaners, but a pick up and drop off location. Someone with the entrepreneurial spirit that has a relationship with the cleaners. You need a couple cash registers, a van, uh, a, a racking system to just pick up and drop off would be very convenient. Everyone in the city of East Chicago is now going somewhere else for their dry cleaners. Everybody, there's not a dry cleaners on at least in the harbor, right? There's not. There's not one in the city of East Chicago. So we are actively saying, hey, there's you not know, a dry cleaners in East Chicago. This is recently there is not. So if any entrepreneurs out there, this might be opportunity because uh, there there is a need. Is there a donut shop or a ice cream shop yes, in that we, area? We, um, not in the area. The Dairy Queen closed, which was a big, mm -hmm. uh, a, a big uh, a heartfelt for all of us that walked there uh, over the years. But no, there is not a. Um, there's not an ice well, cream shop. Well, I don't think there's an ice cream shop, but there is a pastry places in the area down on on Main Street. I believe you can get some yes. nice, some nice good pastries in some of those shops down there. And certainly, we encourage everybody to stop in. There, there are restaurants in the area, um, and I don't want to just mention one, but down if you come down Main Street and Broadway, definitely you can get a very healthy meal, good bite to eat, either Mexican fare, American fare, good breakfast spot uh, down on, on Main Street now. So it's, it's really looking, it's looking better and better. All right, so we're talking to Milton about basically the harbor and developing that and so forth. I had um, recently had some folks in here, and I recently did a game at EC, announced a basketball game, and um, 
by the way, they're heavily favored in the sectional this yes. time around, and I hope that doesn't isn't like a kibosh because every time I say that, it usually uh, well not every time, but hopefully uh, EC is uh, able to play up to their potential because I believe that they're probably the best chance of any team here in Northwest Indiana to make it down to Indianapolis. But let's leave that off the table right now. You're talking about the harbor. There, there has to be places where kids can go and get some sort of entertainment after a while. Can't, there's no movie theater. There's no bowling alley. And, I mean, what about that portion of development in East Chicago? Well, that's uh, – and, and, and you speak to something that was very near and dear to Mayor Copeland. And in on March the 19th, we are at opening the East Chicago Academy for Visual and Performing Arts. This is the former Carnegie uh, Library. Yeah. And this will be uh, the executive director and music director will be uh, Mr. Leon Kendricks. And if you know anything about Mr. Kendrick, he draws children of all ages. So now they will be able to come to this center not only to display some of their own artwork for performances, for uh, for music uh, lesson, all of the arts, visual and performing arts, exactly what it is. So the grand opening is just a month away. And this development, I mean... I. I hate to, to uh, rattle off the figure. I'm not 100% sure, but it was easily seven figures of revitalization uh, in it, this you project. You know, I covered that, too, a number of times. I've had people in about that arts center, and I know that they've raised a lot of money uh, to get that done. So it's a beautiful building. Yeah, and, and, and um, it is a beautiful building, and the restoration that, that has taken place there is absolutely wonderful, and I encourage everyone. There are going to be four performances of a grand opening on the uh, the 20th, the 21st and 22nd, and call the mayor's office, 219-391-8200 for tickets. We'll have tickets available uh, very shortly. They may be available even next week. But when you talk about youth and youth development, uh, this is this is diversifies from us being a city of just basketball or, or just football. You know, these are things that you see in many other communities, and people and children really can excel if they just have the venue to do so. But I'll go even further. And um, I'm going to let this out of the bag, and it's not it's not a secret or anything. But the mayor has also committed uh, to uh, new uh, recreational centers, four recreational centers to be brand new from the ground up, and all of the other existing recreational centers, all of the infrastructural needs or improvement, uh, which is will be substantial. Every recreational center will have some improvement in this next season. The new ones are under design right now, and um, so we don't know when the bids will go out, but we are, we're going over some of the designs. But And again, when you talk rec centers, this is the community for the children in the community. You know, uh, you know, e even now, my, my children are bouncing off the walls with this, uh, with being cooped up with the weather. So if we have rec centers right in the neighborhood for evening programs and summer programs, I mean, that are brand new. Uh, get that excitement back to all the rec centers. We anticipate that the, the amount of participation will, will, will triple. So this is, again, towards the youth and what we can do for youth development within the city. He is uh, Milton Reed with the City of East Chicago Economic Development Department. John Rubel with SEH. John, the uh, $17 million, we stopped at the retail uh, at that corner. What else on that? So, yeah, so um, also with the retail, they're going to be, uh, the city will be reconstructing Broadway Avenue um, for the whole stretch from uh, Euclid down to... Uh, decorative lights, that kind of stuff? Uh, decorative lighting, uh, new pavement, new utility infrastructure, kind of a brand new brand new street from, from bottom up. So uh, be good, good, solid infrastructure for the city for the next 50 plus years and uh, nice, nice new aesthetic look as well, too. To Give us an example of somewhere, somehow, that might have that similar kind of level of quality look that you're talking about coming to Broadway? So I, th I would probably compare it to um, like downtown Naperville or something like that. You ever go there? They put all the decorative lighting. They ripped out all their sidewalks, put all new sidewalks in, and then put in new pavement. And in certain areas of there, it just looks like it. I mean, it, you you can't even recognize it. Is that what you kind of think? It's it, it's to that level. And then also, I think the mayor's vision as well too is kind of getting the city to more looking like a like a Valpo downtown as well too, um, a little more vibrant as well too. 
clean streets, uh, nice new lights and everything, um, vibrant, active kind of downtown area. All right, so you know, Mil- so Milton, go ahead. What are you going to well, say on that? Well, I just want to jump in because uh, you know I've never been short of words. So let me know over the time. This has been one of the easier <laughs> interviews I've done in a while. I just like want, you know when you take one of those little things, uh, those little, your kid gets it and you wind it up and you just watch it run around and it's kind of cool. The kids are, the kids occupied for a while. This is easy. Okay, I'm well, just throwing out balls like out said, there and so, you can shoot yeah, them. So, so my church members and wife would tell you I've never been short of words. All right, so go ahead. But anyway, um, I want to make sure we focus on one of the exciting projects is also the lakefront mm-hmm. and the RDA lakefront and East Chicago had a problem for years in the fact that um, our lakefront although it was open it had the image that it was not accessible uh, it was kind of hard to get to you didn't really know was it was it dead or alive to tell you the truth and it's a beautiful you know all over the country people want to live near a lakefront community so what this project is doing is it is opening up the lakefront to the residents but it also more importantly is that if there is a day where E. coli levels do not allow you to get into the actual lake we're going to have plenty of activities to make this a destination there's going to be a splash pad out there about 4,000 square feet with uh, multiple uh, water features there will be picnic shelters grass areas, volleyball. So, you know, so whether the water has the high coli levels or not, and the Army Corps of Engineers is working on that problem as well, it'll be a destination for all to go to. But another good thing about this lakefront project is that, again, bringing art into the city. Uh, local, our, 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 he happens to work, uh, be the multimedia director, but he's also a local artist, Steve Segura, who you know. He has created uh, the art that will go on a steel wall that will mask the, almost the entire bridge coming down in, into the uh, lakefront area. So when you stand, and again, it just speaks to some of the occupations and the heart of East Chicago, uh, the South Shore Line, uh, the, the, the steel workers, iron workers, police and fire, all the things that just really are the heart, family at least the church that are at the heart of uh, East Chicago. So I think that um, that's going to be a major improvement that should be well underway and completing this summer um, as well. So I think that, um, again, just a major, major project to how we are going to uh, have our lakefront. He is Milton Reed and also John Rubel. You guys are excellent. This was easy. And you know what? It's cool to, I know that, it, it, it's a story that has to be told over and over because a lot of people in East Chicago are understanding what's going on. I don't think a lot of times, if I mention this to someone outside that lives in, say, Munster or Crown Point or Hobart, they have no idea what we're talking about. So it's a story that needs to be told over and over so sure. that people will eventually take a look at it and say, sure. hey, you know, perhaps the right person hears it and wants to go invest in, in the harbor. Sure. So, um, you know what, we're out of time. We have a big show coming up here. Uh, Clyde Calgrove is a longtime member of Veterans Views. He'll be, uh, he'll be buried today, and so we've got to start on time. These guys got to get out to the uh, um, funeral. I do want to remember remind people that Munster Lions has their 59th annual pancake breakfast. That's this Sunday, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. And don't forget about Northwest Indiana Cancer Kids Foundation. That'll be at the Halls of St. George, silent auction, all that stuff, $75 per person. Uh, contact 209-689-2162. You guys were great. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks for a lot, us. East Chicago. All, all right, right there you go. Veterans Views is up next, guys.